So this morning I'm here at Godney, which is a place where, if you remember my documentary, Godney Marshes, back at the start of last year, it was like January, February, sometime like that. Anyway, we came down here on occasion, me and colleagues and friends, and we filmed uh, some fields. One of them is just down that track. And the fields are a rewilding project set up by Alistair Cameron, where he's just basically leaving the fields to grow in the way that nature wants to. Um, there's no very, very little input whatsoever. Uh, and it's more about letting nature take its course, which I think is a very nice and natural model for rewilding. There are some cool animals that come here. It's noticeable even in, in winter when we filmed it last year that um, the animals were definitely more in this field than the neighbouring fields. There was way more vegetation in this field than the neighbouring fields and it was just a really cool little project. It's not going to be uh, any kind of particular kind of vlog. This is just revisiting this filming location which I think will be quite fun, particularly as we filmed it in winter and trying to show rewilding and, and, and a beautiful wildness in winter is quite difficult. You get a different type of wildness, a more stark, bleak wildness. And if you're really interested, then you can go back and watch the documentary at the end or now and then observe because that was made over a year ago, a year and a half ago now. I'll stop wittering on and I will go down the track. I'll finish my chocolate spread sandwiches, uh, have my coffee and then go down the track. Uh, so, see you all in a moment. I'm just here and I've, I've literally just walked down the path from the car and by the, the hawthorn right at the entrance to the field. And in winter we, we sat in the hide and waited and there were a few stone chats that came, a couple of wrens in the edge. They're just gold, gold finches all over the place. It's amazing, this, stuff, this place really has come to life. Okay, so, so this, is, this is just bonkers. Uh, this was the, the way in before. I mean, the gate doesn't really open, but the, uh, the, the amount that this has grown, it, if you can see, it's just thistles and, and and tall grasses and it's just wildlife. It's just it's just absolutely full. Some birds flying over. Down the end there, I think there are cows in the field behind. You can hear you can hear the birds though, sorry I failed with the camera a bit there, but this was all flat, you know, we were able to easily walk across this and, and access things and now we can't. That's a good thing. I'm going to see if I can if I can squeeze through here, but it's going to be tricky. Um, it's going to be worth it. So here I am, just just kind of surrounded by a mixture of plants <laughs> I can't name, thistles. Uh, various different types of thistles, it looks like nettles. I'm gonna have to get my seek on my phone, my um, like Google Lens kind of thing, uh, and start seeing what all of these plants are because there are so many, there's so many insects. Seeing any larger animals in here is gonna be very difficult. I don't think I will, but uh, I'm just gonna actually put this different lens on this one and use this camera to film some close-ups while I've got the uh, the other one there. And um, I'll see you when I kind of get out of this thicket and maybe go to the pond. But first I'm just going to take a few nice shots and show you this area.
I'm just taking a moment to sit down in the grass because the insect diversity, the invert diversity here is utterly phenomenal compared to anywhere around. This is on another level. Everything in between the grass this is strung with spider's webs. This is spider web there, spider web there. There's tons of species. I, I can see bumblebees loving, the, loving all of these different plants, thistles. The word abundance has really come into my mind several times. And there's these two birds flitting between this red stuff, which I'll ID later. Funny, I did this in the winter and it made it much easier for filming in terms of access. But now I can see how much life there is here. It's, it's, it is one field. It's one field and it just makes me think, you know, when, when I think about agriculture and I think about the farms that I can see over there where it's just grass and, and it's just nothing, that is a devoid ecosystem. It's ecological devastation. This field has taken a few years to get to the point it is now. And with barely any leg up, it's just been left and it is thriving. And, you know, we do not need to eat the amount of meat that we do, which uses so much land. We do not need to have the amount of dairy that we do, which uses so much land and is so bad for the environment. Yes, urbanization is an issue, but when you look at a map on Google, when you look top down, there's so much that is just fields and fields and fields and agriculture. And you come here and you just sit here and for five minutes and you can see what the world, what the countryside could look like. If we just literally took a step back, just a moment in ecological history, of, of five years and it bounces to this and then I've been at NEP uh, the other month and um, and that's that's 20 years and and there's there's trees and there's bushes and there's all sorts all sorts there. there's stalks there you know it's so clear when you come to a place like this I'm gonna do a, a little uh, shot where I show you the field next to it and I show you this field and it is just stark the difference but actually there's like hundreds of species here and they all do different things and they all play different ecological roles and they're all entirely necessary in in the ecosystem so yeah i, I digress again but uh, i'll get back to pretty pictures god look at this So I've just come from just a hundred meters that way. I've just been chatting to Alistair on the phone and he told me that in 2022, um, Somerset Wildlands bought another field to rewild. And it's this one. And it's it's just a hundred meters away from that one. It's like a dock leaf. Ah, that's what a dock leaf is, okay. Six years, half a year. We've got this these docks in here and grasses few different types, but nothing like the biodiversity in that field, which is six years on. You start to build up these patches of very, very wild area, and now mammals can move quite freely in between these wild patches. And as we saw when we were making the film last year, there was a lot more uh, activity in the fields and around the fields than there were in the sparse areas of countryside elsewhere. Hopefully they act as what they call stepping stones across the Somerset levels to, to bring back more corridors and passageways for wildlife to move across. Because at the moment, all you've got are these um, rivers in between the fields, these little channels, and that's all they have that has any kind of distinct level of biodiversity in it. And people go, oh, I'm, when I'm around farmland, I see way more animals, I see way more animals. I'm like, yes, there's some element of, of truth to uh, animals like in grassland and, and hedgerows and stuff. But at the same time, uh, you're only seeing them because that habitat is open and that habitat is not like this. And when I was in that field, if there had been a deer sitting down in the grass, I wouldn't have known. If there had been hares in the grass, 
I wouldn't have known if there had been shrews and mice and things. I wouldn't have been able to see them, but you can see them in fields like this when they're going across a field. So food for thought on that front. I get ahead to the other fields now because I'm interested to see how they're doing. Let's go and have a look. This is a field that we shot a lot of the uh, Godly Marshes film at, and it's the last one. I'm only going to look quickly because it's hot. The horse flies are out. I am tired, but quite different. A little bit more, um, uh, less diverse in terms of uh, plants initially from what I can see, but more than obviously the new site. Um, but there's a, a nice bit of woodland in the middle. That's what I really want to look at is the woodland. See whether some of those birches that were growing there have, uh, birches I think they might have been, have, have come up, maybe it's ash, I can't remember, have grown up and started moving into the field and see what that rivery area in the middle looks like. So uh, without further ado, let's venture into there and try not to get bitten. Panasonic's autofocus uh, face recognition is non-existent, it's useless. And as much as I love the GH5 setup here, which is lightweight and I've got two of them and I can carry them around and whatever, it just, the autofocus is so bad. Besides the point, here I am in the woodland. Um, I took quite a bit of difficulty getting in. Um, which is a good sign because it means all of this has grown and it's spread a little bit out. I can see since uh, since I made the documentary that these obviously they've all greened up because it's summer and another year's gone by and they're a lot bigger than they were before. It was also very difficult getting in here. You've got hogweed, you've got nettles, you've got ivies on the floor, uh, you've got uh, these are all aspens, you've got a big oak here. So it's really, really, really nice strip of woodland. These are very valuable to have. We've got a a river here it is dry because it's been very hot but um, in you know uh, when it rains again that'll fill up and there'll be lots of animals using this space I mean there probably still are riparian corridors which is when you have trees down the edge of a river are so important they they provide animals with a corridor to move from place to place habitat to habitat they also give support to the stream or the river that they're running through so the bank is stronger and it stops erosion and sediment going into the river and when that sediment goes into the river it um, covers the bottom, it covers places where fish can spawn and breed, damages the whole ecosystem basically. So having these strips of woodland are really, really important. And it's nice that there's this one here and it's just being left to do what it wants. When the dead wood uh, and the trees die, they fall down here. And obviously in normal situations, people would pull to carry them away, potentially move them, but they're like, that's a carbon sink right there. And it's decomposing and it's gonna feed a load of in, uh, detritivores and saprobiotic organisms, I believe they're called. So very good, healthy ecosystem right here. The meadow out there is very different to the other one. It's a little less biodiverse in terms of plant life, but it's very, very tall, very nice, um, and completely different from the neighboring fields once again. Um, all sorts of birds, snipe and, and things, and uh, little meadow pipits and whatnot, I don't know what they're called, but they'll be happy in there. No problem, I can't see them, that's a good thing. Um, they'll be nesting happily. Yeah, I might sit down for a little bit, see what wildlife wanders into the vicinity, and um, then I'll head back because I'm tired, I've been out for five hours. Uh, might be nice to have some food and uh, maybe even a little nap. So until then, I will, uh, I'll see you next time in whatever I'm doing. Hopefully it doesn't have to be a, a type of vlog. I'm trying to just do more vlogs of anything. 
and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Let me know, you know, if you've got any suggestions, if you're like, oh, go here, do that, let me know, whatever it is. I need to cut my hair. Anyway, till next time. <laughs>